So I'll give a brief demonstration of all of the functions that this dashboard has. It is located on our CWD lookup page. So if you scroll down, you'll see this is where our new dashboard is. And I'll expand this. So beginning with the samples over time tab, there is one filter at the top where you can look at both white-tailed deer or elk. And you can see by this bar graph, our data go back to the 2013 season. Um, an important thing to keep in mind with this dashboard is previously we reported results based on calendar year, but this actually breaks our data down into season. And if you hover over each of these bars, you can see the exact number of samples that were tested in that given season, and you can see where we currently are in this season. This graph below shows our um, positive samples over time. And again, if you hover over each of these, you can see how many detections were collected in a particular season. Now, if we look at elk, um, our data actually only go back to the 2015 season, but again, it's the same idea where you can see how many samples were collected during that season. And fortunately, so far, we have not had any CWD detections in our elk. In our sample prevalence tab, um, there are a lot more features on this specific one, and it does default to the current season with white-tailed deer, and it's showing all of this information at a statewide level. So across the entire state, like I mentioned before, we've collected over 11,000 samples and we've had 91 detections. And this is showing us how our statewide sample prevalence has changed from one season to the next. It also defaults to the CWD detection density map. So this is showing us where we've gotten positives so far this season and where they've been most concentrated, which is not surprising. This is what we consider to be our established area. We do have other filter options. Um, again, you can filter by season. You can look at white-tailed deer or elk sample information. We can also break this down by age, so adult, fawn or calf and yearling. We can also look at our sample source. So our two main ones are hunter harvested and roadkill, and then everything else is included in the other category. We can also look at sex for male or female. And then we have all of these different map options, so we can look at different scales of sampling effort. So one of the ones that's interesting is our DMA sample size. So the different colors here simply uh, represent different sample numbers. So the darker the color, the more samples that particular area has. If you change this DMA map by season, it will actually change those boundaries. So you can see which boundaries were in effect in that particular season. Now, if you hover over them, it gives you the specific information for how many samples were tested in that DMA and how many detections we had. So in DMA3, you can see that changes to about 1,700 samples and one CWD detection. Now, if you actually click on this DMA, it will change all of this other information to what is relevant in that specific DMA. So our sample prevalence has changed along with our samples tested and our detections and how that has changed over time. Um, this is very similar to a lot of these other maps. We'll show kind of the same format. So we have them at the WMU level, the county level and the township level. I'll show you the county just as another quick example. So again, the color just represents how many total samples have come from that county. So if we look at Jefferson County, again, you can click on that county and it will focus all of that information to that specific area. And we can see that there have been eight, over 800 samples tested in Jefferson County with one detection so far this season and how that prevalence has changed over time. And again, a lot of these maps are very similar to that format. But two of the other ones that are really important are the DMAP and the established area maps. 
So this DMAP map um, shows the eight DMAP units that we created this season specifically for CWD. And again, you can see these colors represent the different sample sizes we've collected. Now this map is a little different than the others because we have specific response plan objectives for these DMAP units. And in the response plan, we stated that we would like a target sample size from each of these units of about 250 to 300 samples. And here this shows us the unit number, our sample size goal, how many samples we have left to reach that goal, and how many samples have been tested so far. So for this season, you can see that four of these units are this dark green color showing that we have met or exceeded our target sample size for these units. And again, if you click on a specific unit, it will change all of this information so you can see exactly what is going on in that particular unit. For our established area map, we have the specific established area put on here so that if you click on it, it will again change all of this information. And again, this is an objective that's in our response plan to keep prevalence at or below 5%. Now our response plan specifies sample prevalence in hunter harvested adult deer. This is displaying all samples, which is why this number for sample prevalence is slightly different from what I reported earlier. Another important um, piece of information on this page is being able to see how that sample prevalence has changed over time. And again, if you wanted to get down into more specific samples, you can add on some of these filters. For the sample statistics tab, this provides basic statistics on sample source, as well as distribution by sex and region, as you can see by these pie charts on the left. Um, this is broken down into our hunter harvested samples and roadkill samples because, again, these are our two main sources for samples. We also have the other category here, and if you actually hover over this number, the tooltip will show you exactly what is included in those other samples. And it functions the same way for these detections that fall into the other category. So this dashboard is updated on a weekly basis, and it's meant to help keep both the public and agency staff up to date with the status of CWD in Pennsylvania. 